Art comes from the soul. But what if the soul came from art? Well, in that case, she who controls the art controls the soul. Maybe when I'm through with them, I'll have a hell of a lot more than chalk and paints on paper. Greetings, Seekers of Ascension. Come, sit, let us tell you a story. An allegory, perhaps. A tale of morbid curiosity, intrigue, treachery, and betrayal. Of dissent and truth. A tale of awakening. I am Eldritch Echoes, your storyteller. I will be your guide as we pass into the darkness. With me are those who aspire to ascend, who aspire to rise beyond this mundane life. Mages, shifters, seekers, let the audience know who you are and who you're playing tonight. You don't have the order in the new room. Ah. You're always, always first. You. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah. just anyway. to torture you. Eh. Hey everybody, I'm Except Ambrose. You're, you're, no, that's not. No. But it doesn't have my name in it. Exactly. Ah, I win. Hey everybody, I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they. You can find me all over the internet as shit. Uh, am changeling. Am changeling. <laughs> me. Am changeling. I. I started me, a no new brain. job. And me, no brain. And me, no brain. Uh, you can also find me on. Hey, who are you? Uh, anyway, no, Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. You can also find me right here, right now, playing Gabriel Alvarado <clears throat> Hargrave, whose pronouns are he, him. And, uh, well, we're just all in a hot mess right now. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and tonight I am playing Drake Jones, Punch Mage, who is uh, doing just fine. Just fine, you say. <laughs> Hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me on the interwebs at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Uh, tonight I am playing Roxy, our resident one and only werecat extraordinaire, um, who's trying to keep all these little mages safe. Hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me stolen fires pretty much everywhere. Uh, I play Sophie, the hollow one mind mage. She's got some uh, weird shit going on. Sadly, the green contacts do not show up on camera. Uh, and she's here to try and save Gabriel, who's dying right now in real life. Hello, I am Rosie, regular size mom, and tonight I'm playing Iris Toll, Syndicate, Money Mage. Don't worry, I'm here to prioritize, organize, and monetize everything for you. Hi, Ben, Big Dad here, playing Rudy Goldman, uh, Society of Ether member. Good to be back. And together, this brave cabal acts under the flag of Orbital Tales, where you can witness dramatic tales of both terror and adventure every evening of every day. We bring you enlightenment in the form of epic storytelling. Come see all we have to offer at orbitaltales.com. You can find our current tales there on Twitch and our past tales at youtube.com slash c slash orbitaltales. Helping produce these fantastic fables are many excellent organizations. Be sure to visit Gemhammer and Sons for many fine decks for your role-playing needs, as well as many other play aids, including their newest supplement, Rolox Guide to Violence for 5e. <clears throat> Hitpoint Press carries a wide variety of excellent role-playing products, including a D&D setting called Humblewood, where everyone can be a party of birds who doesn't want to see Steve play an owl and twist his head all the way around. Who doesn't want that? And soon, you'll find us playing through their excellent module, Seeds of Decay. Speaking of which, Alchemy is a new sexy virtual tabletop everyone should check out. It's in alpha, and they're looking for playtesters. It's a slick new all-in-one VTT that does everything you want and more. And soon, later in the spring, we will be using it to play uh, Seeds of Decay on this show. You'll be able to check it out. If you're a fan of subscription boxes, be sure to check out Dungeon Crate to get a box of monthly RPG goodies to level up your TTRPG experience. And finally, as always, a shout out to our fine friends at Helmgast and Free League for sponsoring our show. Without their most excellent games, you would not experience probably half of your favorite tales that we tell. Be sure to check them all out 
Before we continue this parable, as the lights dim and you settle in, please remember that due to adult language and the adult situations of this story, we have rated it M for mature and we strongly encourage listener discretion. We make full use of consent in gaming and safety tools on our show and hope you do the same. Gabriel, remind everyone what happened like a month ago. No, right now everyone has to go back and watch the VOD. That's just, <laughs> we'll wait, it's fine. Now, ah, okay, let's uh, zoom in on this, though, because no glasses. Sophie stands in front of Gabriel, arms crossed. I don't know how to fix his emotions, she says. She has a lot of power, but refuses to use it without his consent. But he's not in a place to give that. It's a small p paradox. Irish tries taking a more reasonable tack pointing out that Gabriel might be the weak link in this team. Oof. She strongly suggests that Gabriel complete this team building exercise and protect his own ass. Sophie tries pulling on Gabriel's feelings about her, but the viciousness of his response makes her have to leave the room for a moment and recompose herself. Even Roxy's bullying doesn't work despite her trying to twist the knife over Vega. She offers to bring Vega back, to which Sophie warns her against. Vega's an Effandi, after all. But Gabriel continues refusing. They're gonna have to knock him out, he challenges. That's just when one of the Rudy Vaders dings, and Rudy himself steps out, up goes the Rudy, holding a rocket bat that he swings at Gabriel. Sophie quickly interposes herself in between the two men, a mirror shard in each hand. They argue a bit with Sophie just asking that if Gabriel is going to get knocked out, to do it at least in a way consistent with being Sahajia and not with a rocket bat. While this is going on, Iris and Drake evaluate Gabriel in their own way. That's when everything goes bullet time and Gabriel screams with a profound, deep grief. Turning to look, it seems as though part of Gabriel is tearing away from himself. But it's not Gabriel. It's got six wings and arms and far too many eyes. Blood sprays everywhere as it yells, enough, in a resonating voice. We all realize we're in an open white space. Rudy's rocket bat has become a video game style hammer while Roxy's clothing has changed in a similar way. Drake is in a soft armchair while Iris is at a secretary's desk. As for Sophie, she splits into four. A shockwave erupts washing over all of us. The angel seems angry, especially when Sophie challenges him on his countenance. It claims to be Gabriel's avatar. It can't fix him and suggests killing him so the avatar can be reborn. Big oof. Sophie insists that's not going to happen as Roxy creeps towards Gabriel. Rudy turns to one side and asks, Hey, can you give us a hand or what? That's when all of us realize we have some strange silvery blue shadow being attached to each of us. One of them points out that this is Sophie's mindscape. Wait, what? Why are there angels in Sophie's mindscape? Immediately, the scene shifts to something that looks like an alternate set for the craft, complete with large, tasteful signs saying, no angels allowed. Drake, dropping his dude bro attitude, speaks directly to the Avatar, who apologizes for calling Drake an idiot. And then calls him an idiot again. Then says we can reach any umbral realm we want from here. A swan being appears, an androgynous figure covered in feathers. There's always hope, it reassures us. When Drake asks how we can realize that hope, the answer is free your mind. We're going to have to take him on a mental journey not unlike that which some of us have already been through. Rudy asks Sophie what to do next, and Sophie's answer is 
first we have to wear down his defenses. That's when not only do the angel and the swan go on alert and manifest weapons, we also hear a sing-song voice from behind us saying, she can help with that. Ah, oh, fuck. Sophie's first inclination is to trap her in a force cage. But then she hears a voice whisper not to, as her own avatar pulls itself free. It's strangely green and seems to be going through some shit, TM. When it pulls free of Sophie, the green in her hair vanishes. It embraces the little girl. In a shift. It appears ourselves, our ideal selves. Gabriel wears the same outfit as the David Tennant Doctor Who, but in place of his face is a series of scribbles in the shape of a sphere. Iris has a giant fuck-off golden sword in her hand. Sophie is bedecked in any number of sneaky, subversive weapons. As for Drake, he sees himself as he was on his last day in the old cult, covered in scars and with broken fingernails and cracked teeth. Rudy's wearing a cel-shaded scramble suit. Roxy doesn't change much. The little girl remains unchanged and says to Sophie, this is who I am. Sophie looks to Drake, uh, what the fuck do we do? Look on her face. Iris wants to know what the girl is doing here. She says we're the lesser of two evils. The girl calling herself Missy explains that Gabriel's connection to Vega is still around, perhaps they could remove Gabriel's connection to Nerthus and move it to Vega. We pondered that. Rudy is very interested in the small child after Sophie explains to him what Gabriel has gone through with his heart being removed. When Sophie suggests that it's time for Gabriel to wake up, he does so, waking up thrashing and screaming from the worst nightmare he's ever had. On Missy's suggestion, Sophie asks nicely for help, upon which Missy's hand sinks into both Gabriel and Drake. Now Drake is going to ride the emotion wheel for a while. But at least Gabriel's himself again. He feels terrible, like he could have fought harder. The time to fight is now, says Sophie. Gabriel wants to know if he has to do this now. Well, Iris is still entertaining the idea of killing him. And that would only mean Sophie has to kill her back. So, yeah, they kind of have to do this now. Gabriel begins speaking about his guilt over Vega, his gaze, and how he failed it. The feelings he had for Vega. As Gabriel and Iris discuss the possibility of breaking or overcoming the case, that's when Vega walks into the room. Complicated by the fact that Drake is temporarily, we hope, a marauder. 10,000 sidekicks hit Father Vega at the same time as the room shakes. Vega has been defeated. You are free of him, Drake says to Gabriel. As everything is coated in magic baby oil. <laughs> oh God. Drake murmurs that this seems too easy. Sophie tries to secretly explain what she's trying to do. Manifest a seeming of Vega so Gabriel can resolve his feelings for the priest. But we're in Drake's mindscape now. And it's time for a full-on street battle with countless ninja priests. Roxy leaps at Vega, going immediately into frenzy. Sophie, her mirror shards, now ornate daggers, takes up a position to defend Gabriel. Meanwhile, Vega flings Roxy into the air as Drake lays waste to the ninja priests. Sophie, now ninja Morticia Adams, 
deploys some Nag Shampa scented smoke bombs and unleashes a wave of razor roses. Gabriel, appearing as the Peter Davidson doctor, cracks his knuckles and says he has a lot of Catholic school to make up for as he joins the fray. Rudy, now looking like a baseball sports star, bursts out of his shirt, bursts out of his shirt, oh my god, I forgot about that, and continues the fight. Iris, who somehow has turned into the replicant Rachel from Blade Runner, effectively clears her quadrant of the battle map. Father Vega slides back to his feet to face Roxy, just as he's body slammed by idealized evil Gabriel. It was written like that. Gabriel is achingly cool, pulls out some kind of button, hits it, and heads towards Drake. Wait. Drake? Yeah. That's when the bombs go off. And there's a Mecca Mother Mary there for us to fight. I feel like Steve forgot large parts of this, too. I I remembered most of what I was doing, but I that ooh, hearing it all back. <laughs> Listen, most of the last session was a fever dream. <laughs> a masterpiece. A pure masterpiece. Roll initiative. Um, remind me, that's 1d10 plus dex? And wits. Thank you, sir. Can you remind me? Uh, same for you, except an automatic additional 10. Yeah. Plus wits. And dex. Okay. Wits and dex. 10 for me. 9. Lucky 13. Fourteen. Eight. Thirty-seven. How did you get thirty-seven? Twenty-seven plus ten. How did you get twenty-seven? Five D ten? No, you roll one D ten and add the number. You don't roll your dice pool, you add the dots. I mean you still go first. You know, it's been a while. It's been a month. So I'll take that first D10. So seven plus seven. Twelve. Twelve. Plus seven. Uh, Steve, do it again, but add six. Want me to roll again or just add six to what I got? 1d10 plus six. Oh, just 1d10 plus six. Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh, 1d10 plus six. Ten. Yep. Your deck's Gabriel. You want my decks? Uh, mm -hmm. That is three dots. Okay. As usual for World of Darkness, actions are declared in reverse order so the faster people can react to what the slower people are doing. So, Drake, what are you going to do when it's your turn? You're not actually acting yet. Um. So Mecha Mother Mary is making her way onto the battlefield, correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. So I am the Marauder. I am controlling the, all of this that's going on. Um, and in the really cool super action scene, this is definitely the moment where the heroes have to go into their lowest, you know, section of the fight when all hope is lost. Um, so... Drake is not reacting. He is in shock, and he is imagining the fact that we're all about to get our just to get our asses kicked uh, for a little while. And there's nothing you can do to stop that. Iris, what are you going to do when it's your turn? 
I believe I was using, um, I don't know, some weird little pistols that I pulled out of my updo to shoot things. So I guess I'll do more of that because there's stuff to shoot. Rick, what's going to happen with the good mooks? With the good? Oh, um... Oh, I mean, so, okay. So, uh, the good mooks will have... Well, obviously, they're going to run in and they're going to eat up uh, the attention of the remaining uh, Bad pri mooks. priests and... Uh, Nun chucking nuns, um, so that we can focus our attention on Mecha Mother Mary and that Gabriel can fight uh, Nega Gabriel. Gabriel, what are you going to do when it's your turn? Apparently, fight Nega Gabriel. Specifically. <laughs> uh, mm. You know, uh, I think I'm going to do. I know I could probably do something magic, but. I think he's gonna go for those daggers that he has. The ones that got him in trouble the first time. The bad mooks <clears throat> are going to attack the good mooks. Rudy, what are you gonna do when it's your turn? I would like to somehow use my five dot avatar to protect me from this marauder effect that was just described. Possibly in the form of Willem Dafoe from Streets of Fire, since we kept talking about that. Okay. What's Mecha Gabriel going to do specifically, Drake? Um. Mm. Oh, man. Uh, Nega Gabriel is going to, um, basically spin his uh, ring right as um, regular Gabriel's coming in for an attack. You're coming in for You're going to like, actually fight him, right? Yeah. Yeah. He is going to spin his ring as the attacks are coming in, and he is just going to... You know how they do um, super speed? But it, uh, in movies, it's usually just that, that everything goes incredibly slow to simulate how fast this person's going. Well, Nega Gabriel is using time control to slow time down to move at super speed around regular Gabriel and takes every piece of jewelry off of him. Glasses, earring, ring. And just laughs. Rude. What's Mecha Mary going to do specifically? Laser eyes. Sophie, what are you going to do when it's your turn? Uh, dodge the laser eyes. <laughs> Mecha Mother Mary. And uh, try and trip her like she's in uh, one of those walkers from Star Wars. Okay. And Roxy, what are you going to do? Well, now that you've heard everything that's happening, you're going first. Yeah. Uh, that, there's a lot of shit going on. <laughs> um, just say the least. Um, so, who, bad guy-wise, is on the battlefield who someone isn't engaging? Uh, make a perception check, but instead of rolling uh, alertness, I need you to roll. You don't have awareness because you're a werewolf. I need you to roll primal urge plus wits. But, but she's 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 a no werewolf. That one's going in the list. <laughs> okay, so I'm rolling primal urge plus wits. Okay. Where's Primal Okay, there it is. Okay. Less wits. Okay. Difficulty seven. Primal urge. Uh, 
uh, I got two tens, a seven, a six, and an eight. I forgot you have my tens. No, I'm rolling in the roll 20 because- No, they're in there. Oh, I was rolling in the in the roller because I thought I didn't have them. I thought you took them. <laughs> I have the dice. They're mine. Rosie's tins she made for me. You're all screwed. I mean, just don't poke yourself. Those those bitches are sharp. <laughs> Would you like me to come throw dice at you? Oh, Rosie's dice are doing just fine. How many successes did you get? Do do tens count as two? Yes. Okay, so one, two, and what was the target number? Six? Seven. Seven? Okay, so one, two, three four, five, six successes. You are 100% convinced there is someone on this battlefield not currently engaged, but for the life of you, you cannot find them. Okay. You're also unclear if it's one or two. Okay. Um. You do know that it is somewhere in the back where nothing is happening. And you're in a uh, abandoned uh, warehouse district blowing up old factories. Yeah. Uh, then I guess she will go to where none of the action is happening and try to sniff it out Okay. next round. Uh I think looking up M29 is going to give me the results I'm after. Okay. I need to look at something on the sheet. Hold on one second. Animal Ken plus perception difficulty seven. Yes. Oh, I thought I was done. Sorry. Doing a look check doesn't actually take up a turn. Oh, okay. So Animal Ken plus perception? Yes. Plus perception. Do I have any of my things? What form are you currently in? The big one, I think. Okay. Yeah, I believe I'm in Krenos. Okay. Matters very much for the nose. What am I aiming for? Seven. Okay. Uh, I got four successes because I rolled two tens. Okay. You make a beeline for a specific roof of one of the buildings. How many dots do you have in mind, Drake? Dos. One. <laughs> okay. Sophie, it's your turn. What should I roll to attack? Uh, I already forgot. What kind of attack are you doing again? <laughs> Uh, I am attacking Mecha Mary to try and trip her up the way they did in Star Wars. What are you like, using? Like, not with Mecha Mary, but with the walker. Um, that really just old my... movie, Empire Strikes Back? Hey, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I am using my Razor Roses to attack the joints. Uh, got a freaking Yu Yu Hakusho reference up in here. You can roll dexterity plus uh, melee. 
there is no actual throwing skill in this one. And you can add your Eritaeus bonus dice. Difficulty target number is seven. Nice. Uh... Oh, that's a nice roll. Do ones take away? Only if you get no tens. If they do, it's one for one, yes. If I get no tens. Yes, if you rolled no tens, ones take away a success. One one takes away one success. Fuck, then it's a wash. Okay. <laughs> three successes, three ones. You hit your target, but it has not yet done any real damage. Mechamary has titanium shell. Has a titanium mithril shell, ti titanoril shell, titanoril. That's what we're calling it. Uh, can I try and uh, draw aggro so she's not attacking uh, Gabriel or Drake? Uh, how would you like to do that? Uh, taunt her. What are you going to say to Mecha Mary? Oh. Uh, probably some really rude and graphic inversion of the Hail Mary. Okay. Uh, manipulation plus expression. Difficulty six. We're not Mecha talking Mary. about the football kind, are we? Got your grace right here, Mary. Every Mecha breath. Mary, full of gears, full of grease. Uh, full two gears. successes. Two successes. Okay. Partial success. Uh. One of you volunteer to roll a d6. You're picking a victim from the party. Oh no. Uh, I'll roll it. Okay. I swear, if you snipe shot me One. from a roof. Oh, I also rolled a one in uh, level 20, so uh, the fates have spoken. <clears throat> so, that makes things super interesting. Hold on one moment. I DM'd is making a very obvious face that you're being DM'd. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, 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 I was caught way off guard. You should be letting you see it. So then, when role playing is necessary, you'll you'll have some you'll have some time to prepare yourself. Combined with your already emotional problems. Uh, uh, uh. Pink. <laughs> really, it's that second paragraph that matters. The rest is all. <gasps> Andy, you're evil. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> By the way, for the audience in the cast, this has nothing to do with uh, comfort level. This is just <laughs> really gonna mess Gabriel up, so I'm preparing him. I'm, I'm much, I'm mildly confused as well. This is the part that matters. Your face is the part that matters. I know. Yeah. 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 Hey. Hey. Yeah. Tyler's more than just a pretty face, you know. He's also an imposing beard. It's part of the face. <laughs> <laughs> he has such nice eyes. He also wears a hat. <laughs> Glasses. It has a cool dog. So this is, who, These who are does, all true. Who, who does this occur to? 
You. Me? You're the one. Well, when I have you roll D6 or whatever for a target, it's by Zoom. And you're first in Zoom. Oh! At least in mine. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, like, I'm going to be Rory in the Pandorica. But worse, right. yeah. But worse. Because, you know. What? That reference, I don't, what? Okay. It just shows me that you two don't watch enough Doctor Who. Oh, no. I get the reference. I... What was the worst season of Doctor Who? No, it wasn't. You hush your mouth. <laughs> Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've got this. Now. <laughs> um. Is it time for that turn yet? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Eddie, why would you boost Tyler? He's already boosted beyond all belief. Did I thought it was a Betty major? Gave us a major it, group boon. Yeah, it was a, it's a group boon. No, oh, okay. No, I was just tagging Tyler so he'd see it. Oh God. Okay. Good. I'm glad I misread that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Roll twenty d ten twice. Roll twenty d ten twice. Mm-hmm. Mick and Mary's eyes go in different directions. One shoots at Sophie. Twenty d ten. And one shoots at Drake. Oh god. This is gonna hurt. <laughs> From atop one of the warehouse roofs. That's gonna suck. Um <clears throat> tens count for two, right? Yeah, and your target number is four. Oh. Well, alright then. Here we go. <laughs> One, two, three, four. I feel like I should be lighting a cigarette right five, now. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, mm -hmm. thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, <laughs> seventeen successes for the first one. Okay. For the second one. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 successes. Okay. You can describe the scene in the movie where it looks like both yourself and Sophie get super murdered, but you know, you're not actually dead. Of course. So like, you'll get ragdolled, but there won't be any like actual holes in your bodies. Describe that for both of you. Um,. So, um, geez, uh, so, uh, Mecca Mother Mary, uh, reacts to the fact that Sophie is trying to, um, you know, do the, the hamstringing, uh, the Empire Strikes Back maneuver, um, and, just kind of like, you know, shakes her foot and Sophie kind of gets thrown back a little bit. And just Drake in attempt to be like, you know, kind of help her up. He's like, okay, you know, obviously he's, his actions are to be stunned. He's just like, oh, oh, Sophie, get up, no. And it's the shot in the movie where they didn't have great special effects. Because this is still like an 80s action movie. Yeah. So we're like kind of huddled on the street, you know, like together. And we look up with shock. And there's just this big red light that just goes wow wow and it just kind of starts flashing and then like flashes one long hard time and it's just like ah and then you just kind of see us go back through obvious foam cinder blocks um and land in an empty office. Um and Is are the office out. full of dire bears? The office is definitely full of dire bears. Where they have been raided by time. <laughs> <laughs> better not be adding anything else to this. I, there's Nega Gabriel, <laughs> Mecha Mary, Ninja Priest, Nunchuck Ninjas, and Mecha Mary has laser eyes. 
Yeah, because she glares yeah. at you when you she you know when you when you sin. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> I mean, next round she's gonna bring out the ruler, and then it's all over. It's that. Y'all are ten steps okay, ahead of me. Okay, but if if rosary you're... beads with spikes because the balls are this big. Hundred percent. Y'all know. Y'all know where this is going. There. This is. What? <laughs> <laughs> I apparently don't, and that's okay. Okay. You don't know your nun cliches? Nope. Becca Gabriel raises up a foot and stomps on real Gabriel. That's the last you see of real Gabriel. <laughs> what the crap? <laughs> Smoosh. Bye. You did this. Rudy, it's your turn. I don't even remember what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> I was trying to block the Marauder effect, right? Yeah. Yes. With my avatar. How your you avatar. Who, who is your avatar manifesting as? Uh, Willem Dafoe from Streets of Fire, because I don't remember the actual main character's name. That's what you want, but because of points that were paid a month ago, <laughs> what actually happens is your avatar manifests... It's Furio. Oh, God damn it. And I'm going to need Furio <laughs> to snap Rudy out of this nonsense. You may have the scene. <clears throat> I got to snap Rudy out of the effect? Yeah, his action is to try to have his avatar break okay. him out of Because, you know, when so, the Marauders so the, around, you so think the, this is normal. So the avatar is trying to get Rudy out of the effect of Drake's marauding. Is that yes. right? Okay. Correct. And you'll succeed, but you have to do it as Furio because it was paid for. <clears throat> sure, 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 sure. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> hey, 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 Rudy, hey. Hey. What? Hey, so uh, I got a message, right, that I needed to come help you out, right, that you were in some shit, right? So uh, I got to go and get you out. Now, I got the uh, the message that you wanted Willem Dafoe. William Dafoe? William Daffero? Willie... Willie, Willie D. I heard you wanted Willie D to come up and help you out with the leather, like, waiters, right? He has the end of the movie, that Streets of Fire thing. It's a great movie. Check it out. Anyway, long story short, uh, we can't afford him, so you get me. However, um, check it out. I'm somewhat of a marauder myself. Hey, I saw that movie. I know that gift. Okay? Okay. All right. It's a, it's a play. It's a twist. All right. Anyway, what's happening to you right now is all fucked, okay? So just ignore it. It ain't real. Just listen to my soothing, calm voice, okay? All right? We good? We happy? Great. Awesome. Let's do it. Hum Here, together. The voice you have is soothing and calm? Huh? This is my soothing, calm voice. You got a fucking problem with this? I'm fucking helping you over here. I get called. I come. I'm over here trying to do the Willem Dafoe gimmick and the bit. I'm doing a bit for you, Rudy, and you're not appreciating it, and I don't appreciate that. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> This character was a half vampire from a Chronicles of Darkness game. A Hunter the Reckoning. Oh, Hunter the Reckoning. I know. Hunter the Vigil. <laughs> now I hate him. <laughs> Come on. Okay, anyway. All right, you ready? All right. Come here, come here. Hold my hands. Here, put, give me your hands. Give me your hands. All right, great. Now, say it with me. Uh, um, I can't think of a mantra. You got one? Chirac. 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 Hurrah. And then perfect. Great. Um, and we do that mantra from fucking goddamn it. Okay. We do Shirak Shara. Shirak Shara. Okay, now you can roll some dice. Roll your irritate, Rudy, against difficulty eight. My avatar or my air attack? Air attack. Okay. Yep, not many dice. So I rolled a 10, two sevens, and a one. Okay. The one's killed by the 10, so you get two successes. <laughs> two sevens? Uh, oh, I'm mad about this. <laughs> <laughs> On difficulty eight. The bad mooks and the good mooks go to war. Gabriel 
knows what's happening to Gabriel. Iris, it's your turn. Um, I was gonna shoot something. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, let's shoot. Um, I don't know. Let's let's try to. Sh We're in an action movie. Let's try to shoot one of the eyes of Mecha Mary. Yeah, sure. This is totally my skill set. Firearms plus dex plus arity. Difficulty seven. Uh, tens in this system, they just, they're just like good old successes. Times two becomes two successes and kills all ones. All right. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Uh, Um, since you're still in the heroes are getting their asses kicked phase, it looks like your attacks are doing nothing, but the audience can see you actually hit a very key component, and now there's a short in. Which one did you shoot? Let's go with the right eye. Okay, in the right eye of the mecha. Uh, and Drake, you can take your actual action now, because we can either continue this or you can move on to the hero's rise phase. So either you can say you roll around in the floor in pain or you stand up and be a hero, whatever you want. Um Yeah, yeah, we did we did we did the thing. Let's um I'll uh, I'll look I'll look to Sophie and just be like we gotta help Gabriel. We're not out of this. And uh, Sophie's just lying there, lightly smoking, uh, and then it uh, looks like all she just really wants to do is take a nap. But then as soon as Drake says Gabriel's name, she's like, Ugh! starts picking herself up off the pavement. And we'll do Crushing the- Crushing gravel out of her knees and elbows and- Ooh. Yeah, and we will stand up to the heroic uh, swelling of music. That is definitely not uh, diegetic. Definitely not what? That's a word I do not recognize. Uh, uh, the music, the music that the audience of the movie is hearing is not in the world of the characters. Uh, okay. Cool. Learn something new. Oh, learning something new. What? Why is? Why? Why? Why is that in what? there? What? What? <laughs> what? I'm. I'm. What? I'm so confused. What are you? What? What? Um, but uh, as I said, that I'm in ooh and ah and all of that for my actual action. I, my my action will literally just be to stand up. And then, yeah. Because Rudy was successful and Roxy's on the right track, we have to figure out what's going on with Gabriel before we continue to hold on one moment. Okay. So Gabriel oh, if... disappeared under the foot of Nega Gabriel? And... Okay. <laughs> 
This sounds like it. <laughs> That's interesting. If only you guys could see what's going on in the DMs right now. Holy cannoli. <laughs> mm. Um, just to say that, then the sacred pasta will appear. What? Uh, <laughs> oh my god that took me a second the holy cannoli <laughs> oh for some reason my mind went to like pasta and like snakes because snakes are the danger noodles it's true <laughs> Yeah, I, I said holy cannoli because I've been working with kids and I forget that I can say fuck now. <laughs> uh... I also may start saying easy peasy pumpkin squeezy. But pump, you can't squeeze pumpkins. If you, exactly. If the pumpkin is squeezable, you can squeeze something... anything. <laughs> if, it, if the pumpkin squeezes, something is done well, horribly, horribly wrong. Bottle. <laughs> I mean, okay, we... but thought what if the pumpkin is squeezing you because it's a mutant evil Halloween monster? Uh, Tomatoes. we did get haunted pumpkins at moot. Did we acknowledge the raid? Yeah. We did yeah. the dire bears. Yes, yeah. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't known what was happening since halfway through the recap, so <laughs> okay, but we're glad Ooh. you're here. Pretty. <laughs> Now that our victim is aware of what's happening. You're sitting humming the mantra, rocking back and forth, and then Furio disappears. Yes. Everything disappears, except the uh -oh. buildings. And a stiff breeze blowing into your face that smells like carrion rot. And you can see all your friends acting like all of this is still happening. It's like a really bad LARP. <laughs> because there's no enemies, just the good guys swinging at the air. And you see Roxy running away from everyone else, looking around for something that to you suddenly should be super obvious. A cute short little redhead in uh, Doc Martens on the roof of a building, just smiling down at everyone. You're pretty sure this is that lacy person you're always hearing so much about. She's holding a little doll. Looks a lot like Gabriel. And doing something that's giving off waves of entropic magic to you. Oh. There's a line of dolls in front of her that look like the rest of you. She has not noticed that you can see her yet. She's snickering at Roxy at the moment. I will find her. <laughs> Zod voice. <laughs> <laughs> what spheres do you have me yeah uh forces matter prime none of that is happening you feel massive waves of magical energy though correspondence entropy life spirit time maybe a little mind everything else yeah like levels of quintessence you've only ever really felt around the archmages you've met occasionally in your training does it does it feel inverted yes it's like clip i can never pronounce it clipotic clipothic yes mm -hmm. oh no yes it's your turn you were the only one actually able to act this is your initiative because everyone else is trapped in the in, the, in drake's nightmare still and you can see that the Drake doll does have a blood red pin, like that metallic reflective red, jammed mm -hmm. right through the center of the Drake doll's forehead. So something's already been done to him. I actually need to think about what I'm going to do. Um, because I have ideas, but... I know the drawbacks to these ideas. So I got to think about actually. 
Okay. Uh, I'll give you a moment. Yes, please. Um, I could also ask my question live. Yeah. Um, so I, Roxy can't see. Roxy knows some something is there. Um, is it potentially something I can damage or hurt with either fire or one of my spirit powers? If the power is specifically an area effect and you think you know the general area because you do know it's that roof, yes, theoretically. It's only single target uh, powers that would miss. Well, I'll copy and paste you that power to let you, because okay. it doesn't specify. It just says fireball. What? Oh, is it the <laughs> one that comes out of your mouth? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, one's yeah, an AOE. Yeah, okay. I heard that start in my head too. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so yes, go ahead and activate that as described. Oh, Fireball. Okay. Um, then I will spend uh, two gnosis points and aim in the general direction of where I think a beam is, and then I'm going to roll my dexterity plus brawl. Uh, well, that's gone forever. And inflict ferocity levels of aggravated damage. And my target number is uh, six, unless it specifies six. otherwise in the power. Okay. Uh, Five successes. Uh, the fireball washes across the top of the building. You can see this, Rudy. And you're like, ha! Ah, Roxy got that bitch. But she's looking right at Roxy when it happens. And she doesn't quit smirking. She does put out a hand. And the fire that would hit her spins around her, condenses, and is pulled into her hand in a little really bright hot ball. Oh, this is going to suck. <laughs> Roll the D4, Rudy. Can I push that? Can I push that fireball into her? No. I mean, your character could try, but you won't succeed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably fail it. Um, Give me a D four, just to determine the fate of either you, Drake, Sophie, or Iris. <laughs> One. That would be Iris. She takes that little right hot ball, and we'll say you do try. She looks confused for a second because she hasn't noticed you yet when the ball sparks for a quick second. Like it's a light bulb going out. And then she looks over and locks eyes with you and winks and shoves that fire into the iris doll. Iris starts screaming and bursts into flame. How much aggravated damage? Roxy. Uh, that's how much you take, Iris. Okay. Unless you can it's soak fine. fire. Till your turn, Rudy. I'm gonna use my flubber shoes and jump up to her. Hey, you don't have to roll for the flubber shoes. You land next to her. Hey, cutie. Cute. Oh, I'm much too old for you. You need to stop you this. Think? I'm the cougar in this situation, babe. She looks like she's 21. I need you to put a stop to all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need you to, to cease and desist. <laughs> she does what I did. She just bursts out laughing. That's cute, hon. And then, like, continues ignoring you. Also, Roxy, when you hit her, you could see the swirl. So now you can see her because that was unnatural and it caught your attention. We'll leave that there for a second while, while Ben continues to think. Drake and oh. Sophie. When Iris bursts into flame randomly and starts screaming, it pops Sophie out of the of the of the nightmare too. And Iris, but not Drake. 
Drake is still experiencing full marauder. Hint, there's a pin in the in the Drake doll's head. So Sophie and Iris, you can now see reality too, except you're on fire, Iris, so you don't really care. Stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> Sophie, what are you going to do? We're out of initiative now. Uh, yeah. So, uh, help Iris, uh, first. You have forces. Uh, no, but I have life. Okay. Two dots. Uh, what are you going to do with two dots of life to stop fire? Oh. Uh, good have, question. Do you have matter? Nope. I think I will just pat the flames out with my hands. You can roll mind to calm her so she can focus. I will do that. That is a good idea. Roll irritate against difficulty four. And then you can also simultaneously smack her with your jacket or something. Uh, neat. Two successes. You were able to think rationally despite the pain, Rosie. Iris. Drake, what do you do? You're still stuck in the mindscape. Everybody's acting weird now. Um. Uh, right now, I really, if everyone's kind of coming out of the everything and I'm the one still stuck in there, uh, I really just want it to be that scene where I'm just yelling like, come on, everybody, we can get through this, we fight together, and then I'm just doing like, martial arts to the air and yelling like you know back me up come on over here and like just every it's just that awkward thing where i'm just punching and kicking the air and just going super ultra hero moment while everyone's just kind of from like, your perspective it's like world war z all your mooks are swarming up the legs of the mechs right <laughs> <laughs> literally gonna pull it down okay iris what are you doing after you put your fire out? It still hurts like mad hell. I mean, that's okay, though. Um, Fifth degree burns, like, it's fine. I feel like five aggravated damage hurts like mad hell is an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she doesn't... Uh, the tricky part of being a technocrat is that it doesn't fit in my uh, idiom, so I can't, I can't do anything about it. Uh, Plus, I'm pretty sure that at five aggravated damage, those nerve endings are just gone. Probably. So I probably feel okay. Um, I haven't seen a mirror yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, okay. So we're seeing Drake looking ridiculous, like, you know, whatever. Uh, there's this... And you hear a floing lump sound off in the distance, the sound of flubber boots. And then you all see Rudy standing next to Lacey, looking very, I don't know what to do, and Roxy looking very, very annoyed. But that's like several hundred yards away. Okay. Um, oh, do I have my, do I have my spreadsheet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the edges are all burned off, but yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna get back to trying to do what I was doing, I think, last time we played. I was trying to find some kind of connection between Gabriel and Vega so I could sever it in the data of my spreadsheet. Because <laughs> Prime. <laughs> your spreadsheet is your avatar, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> You have vital statistics next to all of them. It's just a giant row of data. Gabriel's age dramatically changed. What was your age, Gabriel, uh, as of yesterday in the game world? Uh, let me see if I have an age on my sheets. I don't remember if you did or not. If not, just make one up. I have it in my, my backstory. Me... I'll open it and find out because I know he was in his 20s. Yes. That sounds right. Oh, 
Why'd I do that? Wait, how old are you gonna make me? Like 70 something? Please don't. <laughs> don't worry, I'll probably be able to fix your reality later. Fix my reality later. Wow, that is a sentence right there. <laughs> I reject reality your needs reality a and replace substitute it with my own. <sighs> I know I planned it. This age. I just cannot find. He was 18 when he became a mage. I, I think I'm pretty sure he was like early 20s. I'm pretty sure. You pick an age in your early 20s? Uh, let's go with 24. Your spreadsheet said 24. Now it says 1,024. And you cannot sense Gabriel. As if removed from both local space and time. But you can sense a part of Gabriel because you have Prime. His soul. In the doll on the roof with the redhead. Did Wrinkle just show up? On the doll? No Wrinkles, no. No, no, I mean Wrinkle the character. No. I approve okay. of you knowing that character, though. Everyone's favorite one of them. Um. Okay, that's creepy. But uh, I can translate this for you as the player because your character would have figured it out. Whatever that Nefandi is doing is some kind of magic that forces the soul out of Gabriel and for and is keeping him yes. alive for a thousand years in an instant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, you would know as a, as a as a user of Prime, you would know you would pull the soul out because then Gabriel cannot do any magic and is entirely helpless with no defenses. Uh, do I think that I resolved that by destroying the doll yes. or? Yes. Destroying the dolls will break all of the rituals. Great. Uh, I've still got those pistols. Yes. I shoot it. Dex plus firearms plus Arate. Wait, no, not Arate. Dots and forces. Does she have the wound penalty? Not yet. Because of the spell that Sophie did. Nice. I do not have dots and forces. Um, um, mine. You can use mine for aim. Cool. Which one are you shooting? The Gabriel doll or the Drake doll? Uh. Or any of the other dolls. There's one for each of you. I mean, let's start with the Gabriel doll because we're here because of his ass anyway. Okay. Uh, and Drake isn't actually hurting anyone right now. He just looks kind of silly. Uh, what is my threshold? Six. Four successes? You shoot the Gabriel doll. The soul energy disappears immediately. Well, if he's dead, he's dead. I completed that part of the mission anyway. Ah. <laughs> Rudy and Roxy. Rudy, what are you doing? Did I just see one of these dolls fucking explode? Yes. You hear the shot a second after the doll just bursts into floof. What's the deal? You talking to Lacey or are you yelling at Iris? Iris, clearly. From at, 200 clearly yards at, away. Clearly at Imhotep down there. Do Can you even or hear just him? Iris. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because in the mindscape now, distance actually is just, it's like a holodeck. Okay. I can also just make myself super loud if I wanted to. Yeah. Um, uh, his prime energy is stuck in the doll. I'm trying to release him. We have to destroy the dolls. Okay, I will. I will uh, liquefy those dolls. <laughs> okay, roll your air take against difficulty of four. Uh, I'm going to spend a point of quintessence and a point of willpower. I'll be going against three, right? Yes. Iris is thinking in the back of her mind, well, if it kills all of them, that's okay. Your doll's <laughs> there too. It won't cause any more problems. 
<laughs> that is five successes total. Roxy, what are you going to do with your action? That's an excellent question, sir. Ah. Uh... Because obviously this girl just like absorbed my fire. <laughs> yes, but you do see everyone assaulting those dolls. Already said he's liquefying them, so. Mm. Stalin. I just pictured Roxy playing with it like a cat toy. Ambos, why? Because <laughs> I'm a child. Uh, so does Lacey look like she's going to try and stop Rudy? No. This girl is the ultimate. I don't give a fuck. Well, I want to see how hard she hits. Okay. Strength plus brawl. Okay. Using Krynos form stats, plus your bonus for uh, Razor Claws if you activate it. Um, it's not called razor... that for you. It's called something else. Yes, but they're not instant. Oh, you okay. Yeah, just, don't do that. You have then, to yeah. spend. You have to spend. A, I have to spend a full turn. Um, so it was what strength plus and brawl. Plus. Yep. Okay. So strength is one, two, three. Four plus four plus three. Okay. Eight successes so far, and I have to roll one more time. Eleven successes. Okay. Uh, you leap up onto the roof without a boinging sound. And uh, I thought I was already on the roof because I hit her with fire. I assumed you did that from the ground, but you could be oh. on the roof. It's fine either way. Uh, and you, I don't know, drop kick, body check. What's your preferred bull rush tactic? Head to gut. Flying cross body. <laughs> um into the air elbow on top of head i don't know how do you how do you body check <laughs> um uh yeah in the air like full force front claws to chest uh you hit her which sends her flying off the roof she hits the ground black widow superhero pose <laughs> But slides back a few feet and is bleeding. Not from her chest, but you know, she spits blood like you hit her hard enough to rupture something inside. And that's when Rudy incinerates the dolls. And everything fades to black. Good job, Rudy. What what happens to Drake doing his dope moves? Uh you destroy Mecha Mary. And you wake up on the floor of the house like you had the best dream ever. The rest of you all come to in the house remembering the truth of what happened. To Drake, it was just like a weird dream. Why am I not in my bedroom? This carpet is nice. Do we know that whatever we went through was in Drake's head? It was in Gabriel's head. G Gabriel's head. Because you went into Gabriel's head to try to fix the emotion problem. Speaking okay. of which, Gabriel is lying on the ground too just screaming eyes fully dilated staring at the ceiling with silver streaks in his hair he looks about a decade older i use forces to make him quieter hey. <laughs> he is now screaming quietly uh sophie is like right there beside him trying to figure out what's going on and calm him down no reaction like he can't see you um uh, using uh the spheres that she has uh which are correspondence entropy life mind and spirit is she sensing any of those coming off of him 
Uh, which of those would you like to do one at a time? Uh, mind first. At what level? One, two, or three? I have four dots, so three. Okay. Uh, you could do four if you want. Mm -hmm. Glorious. Roll Arate. Difficulty three. Oh, God. I don't, I don't like when you say glorious. Difficulty three, three successes. Willpower, difficulty eight. Oh, fuck my life. Uh, all right, that is one, two, three, four, six willpower. Uh, also, you got a boost from Devin for your bad ideas. It's not a bad idea, Devin. Did you get on the? Oh, you're still rolling. Sorry. Uh, two sevens and a one, so one success. Okay. You reach into his mind very effectively and experience exactly what he's experiencing, which is a thousand years encased in a stone, five hundred feet under the ground, with all senses operating and nothing but your mind, unable to move, unable to act. Sophie starts screaming, scoots up against the couch, and throws up everywhere. That was the willpower roll. Jeez, <laughs> now they're both just screaming with too. their eyes tied. <laughs> Iris, Roxy, and Drake, what do you do? Um, well, Drake doesn't remember anything that happened. No, Drake is just stretching and going, oh, this is a good dream. Why is someone screaming? Yeah. Um, can I? There's like nothing. Uh, can I call upon my totem? I know my totem's already helped me, technically, but that was a month ago. Um, can I call upon my totem? Your totem says, slap them really hard. I <laughs> Which one are you going to slap? I, am, I'm, I almost just said Ambrose. <laughs> oh, yeah, if that doesn't tell me something... <laughs> Damn, what did I do to you? Are you going to follow suit and slap Sophie, silly? This is a uh, figurative slap, as in shake them out of it is the answer. You don't have to do magic. You just need to snap them out of it and go, look, you're in the room. I don't, I don't get to roll eight dice. Oh, yeah, you do get to roll dice. You get, But it's not going to be your slap dice. It's going to be, because you're still in Krynos form, you might accidentally kill him. That'd be bad. Oh, uh, well, I'll shift down. I'll okay. shift back dice. to human. Slap dice. That's right. That's the kind of game we're playing now. Could, could, uh, could, you, could you just could you just be a giant cat and lick them? Dexterity. <laughs> <laughs> Dexterity plus expression is the dice pool. Difficulty five for both of you. <laughs> Dexterity plus expression. Yep. Cat. I got, cat I got tongues two. are stabby. I got two dice to roll. You can spend a point of willpower before you roll for an automatic success. No, it's fine. I got three successes because I rolled a 10. <laughs> Iris, same for you. I apologize. <laughs> I was Expression plus dex. Giant cat. Um, Question. Is Sophie's spell still active on Iris? No, because Sophie just got snapped into horror and the spell drops. Iris, you have the penalty to that roll for five damage. And it was expression plus what? I'm sorry. Dex. Dex. Difficulty four, but then what's that going to be? Difficulty seven because of the wound penalty. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three successes for my emotional slap to Gabriel. Three successes. You were able to successfully shake them out of it. Sophie is easier than Gabriel because Sophie only experienced a moment of it. <laughs> Uh, what Iris does is she sort of pitches Sophie's nose until Sophie like has to like force Gasp. herself to breathe. <laughs> Good idea. And then Sophie's face to face with a fucking crypt keeper. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes. <laughs> and then we will fade out to our slap. we will fade out to our mid show break on the scene of Sophie and Roxy leaning over Gabriel while Iris rolls around on the floor moaning. Drake looks very confused, and Rudy's just like, can everyone be quiet? And we'll be back in about 10 minutes, audience. Don't go anywhere.
And we've returned <laughs> from break. I return the scene to you. A hot mess of a party on the floor. Um, <clears throat> Y'all so are looking Sophie so good. And Roxy are over Gabriel. Uh, Rudy's going to lay on the floor next to Drake. Uh, so are you gonna is going to like where no. <laughs> Uh, Sophie's going to crawl over to Gabriel and check on him again. This, this is one of those those dreams again. The what was that? Definitely not a dream. Wait, you you're real. Which one of us? All of you, both of you, none of you. I yep. think I'm Some real, of you. and that makes me real. Iris is calling for medical attention right now. Like she's got her, she's like typing in whatever access code to get like an emergency transport to sub hospital for her hey. like fifth degree burns. Um, okay. Yeah, I can't really. I'm not a Healy type. I can't do nothing for you. Our, our um. Is she actually burned in this physical world? Yes, that was nothing to do with you. Got it. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. All right. Something happened. Okay, hold on. Come here. Iris? You trust me? I think she's too busy being in pain and trying to focus on doing the one thing. Yeah, so, she's probably getting shocked by now. Okay. I'm going to take that as a yes. Okay. And I will... Um, Uh, life magic um, to heal her as much as I can. Okay, I'm going to break out the spell card for this one. Okay. Please tell me I'm not getting coated in magic baby oil. Um, that is <laughs> that is balm to uh, fix the wound. The tiger burn. bomb. It's tiger <laughs> Don't you dare put Tiger Bob on her open wound. Ben Gay. <laughs> Honestly, I can't think of anything better. So yeah, I'm pulling out Magic uh, Tiger Balm. Salt and lemon juice. Oh yeah, for those mm. things. Sure. Iris is a tequila shot now. <laughs> Screaming tequila shot. I mean, you All right, could, that's um, going in the recipe book. In, a, in, a, in actuality, so, in, in taking this moment serious. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, uh, so it's mostly just used for bruises, but I used to use Arnica cream. Hmm. Uh, where are these burns on Iris? Mostly left side of body, top to bottom. Left side, top to bottom. Okay. Um, we're going to do kind of some, some magic here, obviously. Um, so this isn't going to make a ton of sense, but this is just kind of you know um seeing that she is legitimately burned and, and this is a serious moment um kind of running over and just being like iris you've got it okay you're gonna be okay you just gotta trust me and i know i don't wear them anymore because they're in storage but right. drake has his hand wraps on um he, he always wears his hand wraps um so he will take them off and actually wrap sections of the burns in his hand wraps uh, to get the magic kind of like as close onto the burn as possible when um, doing the life uh, transfusion. How many dots of life do you have? I have four dots in life. All right. Mmm, okay. sweaty. Okay. What's your Arate at currently? Four. Okay. Uh, you're trying to do this quickly, yes? 
Um, I mean, she's not in like threat of dying this moment, right? No, she's gone into shock though. Um, if she is not actively dying, I will take as much time as it needs to do it properly. Okay. Like this is not, you know, emergency field surgery. This is get her out of pain. Like you know, it, it, this is this is after. But yeah, it's. I will take. DC five. Roll that air tape, baby. Okay, help me out here. Willpower is an automatic success, correct? Yes, but when casting spells, you should save that because that's the only way to recover from a botch, and you can only do it once. Correct. I'm just trying to remember the system as, like we yes. have mentioned, it has been a while. Quintessence is lowering. Be a coward. The... Throw willpower. Quintessence, Quintessence lowers the DC by one per point to a floor of three. To a floor of three. I have a um, plethora of quintessence at you the do. moment. Um being awesome uh, so if my dc is five i will spend two quintessence to get it down to three okay you need six successes you get five rolls each roll is 30 minutes because you're taking your time okay uh so my difficulty is three. Oh nope Dis disregard that my difficulty is three and i am rolling my air attack yes so here we go uh, first roll, four successes. One to go. You're going to get this done in an hour. Second roll, four successes. So, oh, bonus successes. That's good because mm -hmm. you can't just go from aggravated to healthy. Okay. Uh, aggravated goes to lethal and then goes to bashing. So what will happen is each success heals two bashing or heals one lethal, or brings an aggravated to a lethal. So you got a total of the six successes you needed for the spell, plus you got an extra four, so you rolled 10 successes, which will bring all of the aggravated down to lethal, and will heal all but one of the lethal. So in one hour, you bring Rosie down to one lethal damage. No okay. cap. I'm assuming that's all I can do. I can't keep going to get it. Right. There's nothing in the book against it, but for role playing flavor, like once per day seems sure. that fair. Seems, that, yeah, that sounds, yeah, that's reasonable. Okay. Um. So yeah, after about an hour of that, um, you know, so that wouldn't like it looks like healing skin. It's all pink and bruised, but it doesn't look bad anymore, and the pain is mostly gone. One lethal is like. Uh, running a steak knife through your hand. Yeah. Yeah, it still hurts, but not like fifth degree burns over 50% of your body. <laughs> sure, sure. Like, um, you're still going to need stitches, or you're going to need a lot of stitches. Yeah. Right. It's like the worst sunburn ever <laughs> right now. At which point I will unwrap Iris and kind of... <laughs> In that hour. Look at her. Because I don't know that happened to her, like, in my dream. So I'm just going to kind of be like, what the fuck did you do? And this... In that hour, we will fast forward and say that... <laughs> uh, oh, my God, your face. Like... Uh, <laughs> yeah, Drake say that... gets one hell of an earful. <laughs> In that hour, we will fast forward and say that Sophie and Roxy coax Gabriel back to a form of reality, but Gabriel is still a broken mess. But he is aware he is in the room, and this is not just in his head. Doesn't mean he believes it yet, though. He's conceptually aware of this. And Sophie, uh, your mind magic is effectively not doing much of anything. Okay. Um, and it's only because of the severe, profound trauma of a thousand years cased in a rock. Well, so I, I wouldn't try to use um, magic, mind magic on Gabriel without his consent. Um, but, um... Yeah, what? <laughs> um... Is there a way to uninvasively tell if, like, his emotions are still hijacked. 
too much damage but okay. his, his, he hasn't fluctuated since he woke up there's been no weird emotions it is not out of place he is reacting in the proper level of shock for what happened okay. uh, dis- disassociation is all you can sense in there all right i think sophie will just hold him and like like stroke his hair and just like it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay and just try and comfort him and let him sort of work through all this on his own so i totally shouldn't give him my super strong catnip got it how does i'm curious how gabriel reacts to an arm around him uh so he's visibly uncomfortable it's not because he doesn't want the touch is that he's not used to it anymore is there any element of claustrophobia if you start manifesting symptoms then they can start knowing how to help you is why i'm asking oh so he does after like a couple minutes start you know edging away he doesn't want to be held on for too long and the tighter the hold the less he likes it so he's just kind of edges away he's like "Hmm." what light level does this room have right now this is a question to all of you what what this room is it well lit right now or is it dark oh which room are we in I'd like the, to be well lit. The room you were in when the mindscape happened. So I think this I is like the Edison light bulbs. Dining room. We were like in the dining room, which is, you know, it's a big open kitchen area. So it's kitchen, dining room, living room. It is not open table. concept. You're yes, shut it up. is. Yes, <laughs> it is. It's an open, open concept. concept. <laughs> uh, I gave Iris full control over the interior design of the new Haven? No. Headquarter? No. Uh, what is it? Chantry. Lighthouse. Chantry. Chantry. The lighthouse. Or as she would call or, it, a construct. Yeah. Construct slash chantry slash uh, uh, Karen. Yeah. What? So, like Iris wants to see the help actually working? No. We don't have. Sir, sure. there aren't. What? Anyway, so it's also well it's nighttime. Lit. I would. So assume. you. So you're not encased in darkness, Gabriel. Right now, it's nighttime outside, though. So you might react to what you see out the window. But in this room, this is built into the ceiling like 100 watt lights there's like 12 of them six in a row and six in a row and there's also under lighting of the bar that yeah. is ever present <laughs> so and like 20 uh, digital clocks probably one of sophie's magical tools is uh natural linguistic programming <laughs> so she's not going to use it to cast anything but she's going to use the fact that she knows what it is and how it works to try and bring Gabriel back from full dissociation. Uh, you can tell it's going to take months, maybe years. That's that's fine. She, she will at least start the process. Seeing as Roxy knows none of this. <laughs> <laughs> What about the rest of you? You're all just kind of hanging out in the kitchen. What were you going to say, Savannah? Don't worry about it. Um, At this point, uh, are Drake and Iris uh, done or are we're, we're still occupied? No, this is all. We fast forwarded the Gabriel thing for an hour to the oh, okay. Sophie and Roxy could pull him out to be enough to be coherent. Took right. them an hour to do that. Uh, I've I've got a really nice scotch, um, and I'm just kind of uh, not wanting to like really. I'm glaring at everybody. I am <laughs> like a very unhappy cat. Hey, uh, I resemble that statement. If an hour has passed, Rudy has made everyone sandwiches, like hoagie sandwich, like sub sandwiches. You all are very hungry. I check my email. Um, hold, okay. <clears throat> uh, if, if it's been an hour, we're all in this thing. I will make a very deliberate thing to just go over to Gabriel, kind of, you know.
You okay? No. Okay. Why not? Oh. Yeah, you probably didn't see that I was trapped in stone for a thousand years. I could see and hear and feel and smell and taste everything. I was completely aware. I was just solitary confinement for a thousand years. Out of character comment before you continue. No one has told Drake Lacey was there yet. Carry on. I don't think Sophie saw her. You all did. Everyone definitely. except Drake did. Oh, <laughs> even Gabriel? Uh, she was in your mind for a thousand years taunting you. That bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Lacey was there taunting me about Vega and I, I'm not okay, Drake. I'm, I'm not okay. <sighs> just so I can clarify something real quick. That's Roxy. <laughs> Roxy's just like, does Re- Lacey have red hair? Just, just to clarify. And, uh, yeah, she's ruining the good name of Doc Martens by wearing them. I thought shit, somebody shit. else ruined that. <laughs> okay, cool. She can definitely take a punch, I can tell you that. You saw her? Yep. Does she like dolls? She likes dolls, can bend fire, and takes one of my punches like a cheese. She likes murder and pain and she- torturing people. How about her avatar? Is it all flipsy doodles? Yep. Yeah, I met her. Mm-hmm. So she, she seemed not nice. I'm gonna drop this in here now for the players. But the characters, because of poking around in Gabriel's mind, would realize this is what happened. It will also give you an idea of what Lacey's power level is now. What's the scanner say? Oh my god. Over nine thousand. It just exploded, yeah. And as as noted by the spell, it's a ritual, which means that was happening the entire time you were in the mindscape. It was all a distraction. Make Drake toss you into a distraction so Lacey could cause you pain. As usual, that bitch is behind it all. Is there any way to heal the psychic trauma? Not without months and years of therapy and spell work. Okay. Hey, Gabriel. What? <clears throat> Sorry. And the fact that Gabriel shoot... isn't shattered already is a testament to his strength of will. Do you want to go shoot pumpkins into the ocean? Oh. We do have Excuse me. We have a pumpkin launcher in the barn. It's called a pumpkin chunker. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Can I get high while drawing Lacey's face on them? Absolutely. You want some catnip? I'm in. Do you want to break a wall while we're at it? Uh. Sure. All right. Roxy Come on down to the old art studio. Grabs her special pot that she's hidden in the corner of the kitchen window <laughs> and hands so, it to Gabriel. Lacey, I'm sorry, uh, Sophie. <laughs> the secret's yeah, been know. revealed. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> True story Lacey was on the short list of names for my mom to name me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, we have it to was, talk later. <laughs> it was that, Virginia, and Rachel. Um, the right choice. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, 
Sophie will pat Gabriel on the shoulder uh, as he leaves and then go to Drake and say, we, we got to talk. I was, uh, I kind of just look back. Yeah. And I'll look to Iris. Um, I just make the, the nonverbal cue of just like the three of us stay here while the three of them go do pumpkin stuff. I wasn't going to go, but I will now. It's fine. <laughs> oh, I thought you were. Like I, <laughs> I thought you were providing the catnip. Yeah, yeah, I thought you were going to go get high and destroy pot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't abuse my catnip. No, she'll go. She has to watch out for him because Lord knows Rudy isn't. <laughs> Rudy is is you know, <laughs> Rudy Yang end up in orbit on a toaster or some shit you're correct what do the other three of you do hey that was a good movie sir it was a very good movie it was <laughs> uh so sophie's gonna make some tea uh and just <sighs> we gotta stop Letting Lacey put us on the defensive. Agreed. Everything that we've been doing has been a reaction that she's planned for. Mm -hmm. Look to Iris. So you've got a taste of what it is that we're dealing with over here. Now you know what to plan against, right? Do you assume I've been doing anything different? No, I don't. But now you have some additional intelligence, I'm sure it will be of assistance. As Sophie's saying, our number one goal needs to be offense. That's what threw them off before. When we attack their home, they're going... I don't understand why she's not still dead. So whatever we do has to be big enough that it ends. Well, yes. she's a reasoning being. Can we just talk to her, negotiate? Because you seem incapable of actually killing her. He's Nefandi. Intelligence plus Enigma from Drake and Sophie. Standard difficulty. This is a recall roll. Oh, fuck, yes. Four successes. Uh, none. No, when Drake says, I don't understand why she's not still dead, you remember, this is a way for the characters to remember things the players probably forgot from a solid year ago. Uh, Lacey doesn't work alone. Lacey's part of a team, and that team had a boss even before there was a uh, Vega. So it's not just Vega and L Lacey. Uh, hold on one second. I'm gonna pull up my own notes. Mr. Pinkerton was the only thing you got for a name of whoever is in charge of their little cabal. Well, not even in charge. The... More like you met him once for a second in hell. No, wasn't the, I was going to say, yeah, that was the guy in hell. I thought that yep. was different. Okay. Uh, he, I say in charge, it's not actually true. He is the one that gives them missions, their little cabal of assassin ladies. The one in charge of their little cabal of assassin ladies. Names, hold on. Sisters of Tobit. Tabitha Shaw. And there were also two others in addition that are on the same finger quote level as Lacey. There were four of them in their little circle. You met them all briefly when they tore out 
Leo's soul. There was the uh, Latino lady who you pegged as an FBI agent formerly. The one who was clearly in charge, the no-nonsense lady. And then... Uh, still looking up the names of the other two. So you know there's at least five of them. If you add Vega, that would be six now. So uh, in that case, Sophie will say... Uh, she has a whole coterie with her. And who knows what they were able to do. Well, then, can we trap them? Yeah. How? We can work on that. But a direction is helpful. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of trapping them. I'm in favor of killing them. Uh, whatever it takes to stop them. I just want to make sure we do it right. Because so far, it feels like everything that we've been doing is a reaction. Which means that we are falling into her plans. She wanted us to kill her. Or to at least think we'd killed her. So the places where uh, Iris's mind goes, what uh, would popularly probably be thought of as like binding rituals, uh, her stuff is kind of like code um, and trapping stuff in like very specific, because everything is all data. So she's, her brain is like over there regardless of what you're actually talking about. If only I knew how you could surgically implant a conscience in someone. Why? She's killed a lot of people. She's tortured more. And she likes it. Mm. And that has anything to do with implanting a consciousness? Why? Conscience. Oh, apologies. Give her a little Jiminy Cricket. I have the names for you, Rachel. I have succeeded somewhat. Uh, Tamara Pace is the leader. Emma Vasquez is the second of the four. And the last one is the name I just gave you. Uh, which name was that? different i had that one in a different document and i closed it uh tabitha shaw and yes betty i see you um okay well shit we need to make an agreement right here the three of us. There's no taking prisoners. There, I don't see a need to make her see the error of her ways. We find them, and we destroy the entire outfit so they can't come back. Oh, no, I'd give her a conscience to weaken her, and then I would fucking shoot her in the face. Okay. I'm good with that. So... You did. Uh, that's actually how you did weaken her in the Godscape at the end of the last season. You made her feel remorse for what she did, and that slowed her down long enough for Leo to rip her apart. I have a question. Yeah. Did you just say Godscape? Yep. We were in the wild. 
They went into the actual wild and into the a particular part of the wild ruled by a fey god. Yes. And it broke Gabriel's emotions. Not on purpose. It's because Gabriel wouldn't w- w- was too stubborn. <laughs> so how was Florida? <laughs> no, now we got the whole doomed romance going on. So I'm gonna look at Iris. So you're an analytical mind. That's why you're here. cards on the table. If you need anything from me, I can help. I'm not what I tend to come across as most of the time. Bruh. I'll let you know, should I require your assistance. Um, I will be trying to think about how you might trap, detain, at least one of these individuals to start and she goes off and starts like describing almost like a uh, the thing that comes to my mind is something between a server farm and um the box that ghostbusters use to trap things so all right what what's lacy's flaw her arrogance right We got to figure out a way to use that against her. We need to bait her into a situation where she thinks she can win, but we've got our thumb on the scales. What was her interest in Gabriel? Just as a plaything, from what I remember. Yeah, Gabriel's emotional problems were from that fey god that he made a deal with. It um, took Gabriel's heart out and replaced it with a heart made of roots and moss. I had a game reminder. When you raided the house and pulled the uh, giant tomes down in the journal, you discovered there is a Mr. White, a mystery figure, supreme in power to all of them, that set them against you because for some reason your cabal is the only thing that could thwart him from his descent into Klepothic godhood and the Fandic god. He has begun his descent to the Klepothic realms. He passed one last season. Lacey sacrificing herself and letting you kill her helped him descend to pass realm one. He has entered realm two. That's all you know. That is her motivation. Attacking Gabriel is because she was hired to do a job. You don't know why or exactly what that job is. All right. The fact that she was attacking Gabriel today probably has more to do with Vega. But yeah, we got to figure out God, oh man, I don't want my mind to go there. But we're going to have to figure out what the next step of Klopothic descent is and what Mr. White's going to do to get there and then stop him. Rosie has no idea what the fuck that is. Neither do I, but just nod your head and say yes. All right. That's the plan. <laughs> All right so uh, y'all know what the Jewish tree of life looks like, right? You've got Malkuth up here and then a whole bunch of spheres and then you've got sephiroth at the top no not sephiroth kether at the top and so the idea is in mysticism you start at malkuth and you ascend up through the flame the sword of fire and eventually reach enlightenment right become as gods full knowledge of the world Clipothic descent is when you s- turn it upside down and you're still starting at Malkus, but now you're descending down the anti Sephiroth, and instead of ending up at Kether, you end up at Oblivion, Unmaking, 
whatever the fuck the opposite of ascension is. Uh, yes. Nefandi are dark mages that symbolize all that is corrupt, destructive, and evil. Your group, Rosie, says they were banished beyond the gauntlet. The traditions think that avoidance and conflict are the only ways to be safe from them, and the marauders uh, use their madness to protect them from them. Uh, some have a higher goal in the grand scheme, some don't. But if they do have a goal, it would be to rebuild the cosmos by tearing it down. Destroy everything, hit the reset button, and, re and re-manifest themselves as the gods of creation. Well, we certainly can't have that. We've spent centuries building this consensus, saving everyone from dragons and rogue mages. Um, what Rachel said is correct, but it's not just the descent. It's also that to become Nefandi, there's no going back. They corrupt you slowly but surely through innocent acts until they make you utterly depraved and there is nothing that is gross and evil and highly redlined by most people for consent tools that Nefandi will not do. When you pass the point of no return, they step you through the call, which is a supernatural thing that essentially rips your soul out, inverts it, and shoves it back into your body. Everything is reversed. So life is about uh, I should have a thing for that. Hold on. Uh. So, for instance, the Klopothic sphere of life. At one dot, you would sense life and attack simple patterns. At two dots, you would mutate simple patterns, create simple diseases, and attack complex patterns. At three dots, you would mutate complex patterns, create complex diseases, create simple mutant patterns, and transform simple mutant patterns. At four dots, you would create complex mutant patterns, transform complex mutant patterns, and create superior disease patterns. At five dots, perfect mutation. So think uh, Shubna Gurath from Lovecraft, okay. for instance. All the spheres work the same way. Reverse them, make them evil or corrupt. Correspondence wouldn't be bring all space together as one. It would be find the cracks in reality and tear them open to the void and step through. <laughs> also, you cannot redeem an Nefandi. There is no going back. Once you enter the call and your soul is inverted, you were lost forever. Oh, well, yes. That's... That is the one mean. time, yeah, it is the one time in this game where you don't have to have any moral quandary about super murdering them. <laughs> yeah. Their avatar is lost forever. When it's yes. re reincarnated, that person is also a Nefandi. And that's what happened to Vega. He was born with a Nefandi soul in a body and he was lost from the beginning. All of the season was him fighting a losing battle against his uh, Wittersley auntie soul. Hmm. Very sad. He loved it. <laughs> are, are our characters aware of all this information we just yes. got? Yes. Okay. All right. 100%. <clears throat> so This is all very much Mage 101 for so, new mages. <laughs> so Iris, uh, if you don't mind, can, let's find where they are, what they're doing, all that good stuff. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll get more information on the mystical side of what the path is um i'm going to request if you don't mind um whatever the process is for rec uh for um requesting a nuke let's go ahead and start that process okay <laughs> oh i can have overwhelming military might here quickly right. or dispatched very simply do you, I mean, do you really just want one nuke well, I have two I, okay. fists, so I do. I could use two. We can't. We, we can't nuke Arkham, and we can't nuke Lacey either. We're gonna have to guild rule her. We're gonna have to trap her, guild rule her, and then murder her. No, All it's not here. even murder. It's just gonna be an execution. I think nuclear weaponry and um, evaporation is a good start. Ben. <laughs> I was going to say, 
So I mean, we Sophie, could also just make Rudy build something. I was going to say, <laughs> Sophie, we can use nukes. We've got Rudy to contain the explosion and not... I'm assuming he can do that. Make sure that other people oh don't God. get hurt. Can I we... feel that would be the highlight of his life. Can can just a thought, thought prof, like brain doing things. She does not look this excited. This is Rosie getting excited. Of course. Um, can we... Uh, so she was talking about building something to trap them. Can we set off the nuke, trap a destructive force and them in the thing so that they're too busy trying not to go to do much for a long while? So uh, your, your avatars and your genius, Iris, react positively to the Gilgo comment above all the others. Yeah. Okay. Execution probably just gives her more of what she wants. Taking away her magic, though. Oh, no. Uh, take away her magic and then destroy the mortal shell. Because she's still a crazy sociopath even without magic that the world is probably better off without. True, but you're unsure if killing her again is some kind of blood sacrifice to feed Mr. White. That's However, fair. you could drop her in a dark hole forever. Oh, yeah, we could do to her... We could oh, actually yes. do to her what she... There what it Gabriel is. think had happened to him. But we have a plan, generally speaking. Now we've got to find them. Remember, it's not just her. There's five of them. There's the three. What do we call them? Murder sisters? <laughs> I I call them the Wicked Sisters. The Wicked Sisters? Okay. Uh, your books that you took from the house told you they're the sisters of Sebek, but call them whatever you want. But that's what they are. The the they don't sisters. get the dignity of getting to, to find their own name. Yeah. Well, that matters because Sebek is a Cthulhu Mythos entity that is apparently on their side, which also matters to your plans. Eh, we'll deal with the Cthulhu monster when, when we cross that cosmic bridge. Um, Probably part of how Lacey came back. Huh. Like Rasputin in Hellboy. So, we've got the three sisters. Mr... Pinkerton, Mr. White. Pinkerton. Mr. White. We've got five of them. We know what we can and do. And Vega. Do we know if Vega's working directly with them, or if, like you yes. said, if that in was... his goodbye letter, he specifically, specifically said, I brought Lacey back. That's right, that's right, he did, okay. So, and Vega. So whatever our plan is, it has to include all six of them, because if we're only doing one at a time, they're going to just keep bringing each other back. So this is an all or nothing thing. Could we just dangle Gabriel in front of them and see what they do? That'll work for Vega. But not the rest. Oh. I might work. You... They invited me to join them. What is it Mr. White wants? He wants dissension. All right. All right. Um... No one come near me for the next couple of days because I'm going to do some research and try and figure out what the next step of Kripoth Descent is. I'm going to go call some ninjas. I only laugh because I know Drake said that with a completely straight face. <laughs> I'm going to go make money and try to build a server farm spirit containment unit yes uploading yeah. nefandic entities into servers is always a good idea right drake <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> you just uh, delete them that wasn't yeah. even drake Come that was his other character <laughs> uh iris can you go loop everyone else on in on the plan i'm gonna uh, hit the books give them give them the evening with the pumpkin launcher i think they should have a bit of fun Oh, I mean, you don't have to do it right now, but I am about to start researching some really dark shit, uh, so no no one come near me for a couple days. Be careful, please. Pumpkin shooters, you can have the scene for a few minutes before the night brings you all, all to right. sleep, except for something. A little bit more to the right, and you'll hit Iris' car. <laughs> um, 
just so uh, Rudy and Gabriel know, like when they got out and like went out towards the barn and they were like out of sight of Iris, even though like everyone now knows that Roxy is a shifter, she just prefers not to shift in front of Iris if she can help it. Um, so she f shifts into full feline form when we, when you guys, when we go out to the barn and just lounges about. Um, she lets Gabriel pet her if he wants. <laughs> Would you like a cat tree? Yes. You didn't hear me say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it uh is it night or day out right now, Tyler? It's night. 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 Oh, okay. To call it 8 p.m. when you start shooting pumpkins. The light also, inside Tyler, the barn has some nice like warm lighting. Your okay. ventriloquism Tyler got amazing. Um, <laughs> um so yeah, if if Roxy's just goes kitty and lets Gabriel pet her that softness was something he hadn't felt for a long time being trapped a thousand years in stone so he might actually just kind of like lean back and fall asleep just out in the open because being in the house even though it's very open it's still got walls very claustrophobic so he might actually try sleeping outside for a while but yeah he uh, just for the first time in a thousand years peaceful sleep if he decides to stay outside um roxy will stay outside as his like cushion <laughs> for lack of a better word um first <laughs> thing when you when a cat falls asleep on you you don't move <laughs> you don't move yeah so gabriel fell asleep on me so therefore i cannot move um <laughs> and um because nowhere is ever safe. Um, Roxy does not sleep. She stays up all night, making sure that the her Karen, AKA the lighthouse uh, and Gabriel are safe. And Rudy oh. will just be like shooting off pumpkins in the background. Oh no, if, he's not gonna wake, he's not gonna wake up Gabriel, but what he is gonna do is into these little prongs into the ground around you that will make the ground both warm and more comfortable to sleep on. Why are you and then set the pumpkin chunker to uh, target anyone that comes within 50 <laughs> yards of you. That isn't one of us. <laughs> no, like, except for Iris. Iris is just going to get poked. That will kill her. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> that will recognition needs work. <laughs> uh, that would kill her. As night descends. I need everyone to make willpower checks. Difficulty, 10. There was a whole row of poppets and they all got melted. You're expecting a lot of botches on this, aren't you? We're all making no. this roll? Yes. What was it again? Willpower, difficulty 10. Oh my gosh. No, Rudy, uh, major. I expect low successes all around here. I am using oh, I the boost that <laughs> Devin gave me. Okay. Uh, I will also use the Devin boost. Okay. Oh, wait, I, I got a boost from Kayla. What does that mean? Uh, extra D10. You also oh, got a whole group means. boost. Uh, yeah. I double, I double botched. <laughs> New ones. Uh, what does the boost do? Give us one more dice. Yeah. The base level boost, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna use this new boost. Okay. How? I just rolled two ones in a row. <laughs> I've rolled nine dice. I rolled three ones. Okay. Rudy botched. Roxy got four. So if you got one, Gabriel failed, but not a botch. Drake failed, but not a botch. Iris. So uh, no successes and two ones. Botch. Yeah! You're keeping it in the family? Walkers are doing great, guys. <laughs> so. Fail, but no botch. Lose one willpower permanently. Lose one point of willpower. Successes. Lose one willpower permanently. Lose no points of willpower from your remaining total. Botches. Lose two points permanently. You can buy these back with XP. Yeah, but that's really expensive. <laughs> Yeah. And the one who botched worst 
a, a brand burns into your skin while you're sleeping and wakes you up because it hurts like mad hell like it's actually being pressed against your flesh even though there's no one there and you feel like when it's done all kinds of hostile spirits know you exist now cool i just lost 15 points of experience basically <laughs> fuck your mages you'll figure out a way to undo it Essentially, you've been cursed. Also, really? you, can, you, you can you can thank Betty. He summoned the Fandy. Fuck you. <laughs> you have terrible nightmares. You awaken the next day. Even if I didn't sleep, I have terrible nightmares? Yep. Daymares? Yes, daymares. Dark spiral thoughts. You know and... how you know how you're in that spot right before you fall asleep, and then sometimes you start thinking weird shit, and the shit gets really weird. It's like that, but a nightmare. Like you're I mean, still aware, and you're like, I don't know what's going on in my head. I mean, I'm a writer, so I also know how you are able to disassociate in really yes. unpleasant ways <laughs> while being perfectly awake. Like that, yes. Uh, you are all aware that's a magical curse. It is reversible. Uh, Including Rudy's thing, which is a bonus problem. <clears throat> Roxy uh. wakes up very bristled. Um, her tail lays in a circle around Gabriel, not restraining him or holding him or anything. Um, and she wakes up very, uh, she is very disgruntled when Gabriel is finally awake. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to I didn't mean to fall asleep on you. Sorry. Don't have to apologize. <sighs> oh my god, I can have breakfast again. I'm going to have everything. I'm going to have pancakes and waffles and and I'm going to I'm going to put sprinkles on my waffles and and I'm going to I'm going to have eggs. I'm going to have sausage and I'm going to have bacon. And I'm going to have uh 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 what's what's the what's the creamy stuff on top of a biscuit with the meat butter? Biscuits gravy? and gravy or shit on a shingle? Yeah, yeah, both of those, Rudy. Yes, precisely. I'm going to you know, it's Oh, Rudy's thousand... still asleep in an easy chair on the, <laughs> uh, the deck of the oh. barn. Well, that was in character. That was <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna have yeah, yeah, gravy, uh, gravy. I'm gonna have. Did you? I'm gonna have all of that. Also, have bad dreams. Yeah, I did. Sophie, and do it. What's your spirit at? Uh, my spirit's fear. Yep. Uh, one. Who's got the highest spirit in this spirit in this group? I think so. Spirit. Uh, me. Yeah, because Leo is our spirit mage. I have two dots in spirit. Drake. Uh, I don't have much spirit at all. I have no spirit. Iris. It's called dimensional science. Nope. Cool. That means yes. You would need the cat to burn some gnosis to do what you need to do, which I just sent you. Good luck. This will give you information you need. God damn it. And you have those books you took from their house that has this right in it in detail. I don't have enough correspondence either. No, but there are plenty of people in the group with at least two correspondents. Uh, Drake, how much correspondence do you have? Oh, uh, one. Fuck. Uh, how much correspondence does Iris have? Iris has three. 
All right. Uh, I will need Iris's help to uh, help me do some uh, very deep shadow work. Very deep shadow work. Yeah, essentially, uh, if I was an evil-ass motherfucker and try and get into the mindset of being that evil motherfucker, how would I pursue dissension? Is that a question like, to Drake or the GM? No, no, no. That, that's, okay, okay. I'm describing <laughs> what Sophie's trying to do. Um, and like the risk is always that like you don't come back from that fully. Or that um, by getting so close to your shadow, you give it power. I promise to shoot you in the head if I have to. You know, if I'm going Wittersland, please do. Uh, am, am I still in the general vicinity for this? Um, yeah, because I would have gone to Drake first. Right. Sophie, just remember remember why you're doing this. You wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't to help someone else. So no matter what you do, just remember it. I know you know now. Remember it. You wouldn't be doing what you're about to do if it wasn't for the benefit of someone else, which means you'll never truly go too far. That means a lot. Thank you. And I'm not just... I'm not just doing it for Gabriel. I'm doing it for you and for Iris and for Leo and Daniel. <sighs> All right. I should like give Drake a hug. Thank you for being a friend. I'm not because of the seriousness of the moment. I'm not going to say it. He's literally biting his lip to not say the next line of the song. <clears throat> uh, and so then you'd say that I, I would need Roxy's help to cover the gap of spirit? Yep. Alright, so then I would I'd seek out Roxy. I'm on the lawn with Gabriel. Yeah, so like, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? She looks up at you, then looks over at Gabriel. And she's just like, yeah, but I should probably change. And as she... This is a giant cat talking. Yeah, right now. She, <laughs> Call her. She Wait, stretches. you're in feline form? It rours at you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meryl, Meryl, number uh, Gabriel, Gabriel, she's a white tiger. I say, are you a calico? No, I'm yeah. not a cat. Cat, I'm a tiger. Um, <laughs> uh, she kind of like butt nudges Gabriel to sit himself up, and then as she stretches, she changes back into Hamid. What do you need? Uh, I need to talk to you. I need a favor. I didn't do it. No, you didn't. Glances over at Gabriel, Gabriel and Mouse. You probably did. <laughs> and um, she kind of winks and then uh, walks off with Sophie. Uh, before she leaves, uh, Sophie's going to kiss Gabriel on the forehead. You hear him happy sigh for the first time in a long time. Happy side with I'm, me. I'm gonna. <laughs> he had happy sleep with you. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm gonna do something. It's gonna be pretty dangerous. I just want you to know that you're the best thing that ever happened to me. What? What are you doing? I'm trying to figure out a way to fight Lacey. 
She keeps yeah, catching but... us on the back foot. Uh, are you sure that? I mean, this seems pretty serious, whatever it is. Yep, it is. Self, you don't have to do this. I do, because we can't not do anything about Lacey. Can I help? The best thing that you can do is focus on yourself right now. Ooh. <laughs> I uh, I was able to do that for a thousand years. I don't focus on on getting better on not letting her win, not letting her torture break you. I because if well. I, if I know that I can come back to you, I'll be able to come back. That whole uh, put on your oxygen mask before you put on the person's next to you. All I need is for you to for you to be you and to know that you're here and that you're safe. Is it okay that I might not be the same me? I don't think she was ever able to reach the core of who you are. Then you've got to do the same. Okay, that's fair. And uh, kick ass, take names, and well, you know, do some... Uh, voodoo with those names and stab them and tie them up and wrap them in a cow tongue and you know all that uh, the verbena stuff that you do not a verbena oh shit it's been a long time I actually forgot what our new people did as well I'm a hollow one Gabriel I've got a really terrible joke, but I'm not going to make it. This is a serious moment. And I actually learned a lot of self-control in that thousand years, despite the breakage. So, um, so she'll give Gabriel a big hug, kiss him on the cheek. You absolutely have been the best thing that has ever happened to me. Likewise, self. Roxy, totally an earshot. Like, so since it sounds like I'm going to do something dangerous, you're now in charge of my plant. Thank you. Does it have a name? If you want it to. I'm going to name it Philip. Sure. So take care of Philip. Um, yeah. So then... Sophie will rejoin Roxy. Um, hey, thanks for that moment. Um, I don't do think you, I had a choice. You're welcome. Do you know what a shadow is? Looking at GM to nod so, or not nod. Like young in <laughs> young, I'm talking young in psychology here. Like you've got your animus, which is like kind of like your masculine part of you and then your anima which is your feminine part of you and you've got like your ego and um which is like your your stealth identity right mm -hmm. so the shadow is the part of yourself that's like dark it's everything that's a part of you that you wouldn't you don't want to be part of you like the selfish mean right so yeah. The woman we're fighting, Lacey, she's essentially given herself over to her shadow. And she's working for a guy who's done that even harder. Mm -hmm. 
and I need to try and figure out what they're doing next, which means I got to go into my shadow. Try and figure out what I would do if I was the evilest motherfucker on the planet. And then sort of come back from that and like not bring my shadow with me. The that part you ass, understand. Yes. But still, the smart ass in her wants to say you could just have a therapist ask you to do a deep dive, but <clears throat> okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, I could totally get a Jungian therapist, but it would take years because, like, I can't explain magic to my therapist. Okay, so instead you want to fast track yourself into darkness and hope yes. that you can pull yourself out. Did she, like, look over to where Gabriel is? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying. So, I, I'm going to start a ritual, and the part that I need you for is, uh, you are a bridge between worlds. Mm -hmm. And you have a deeper understanding of the spirit world than I do. And so I'm going to need your help to sort of help me cross between modes of being. Uh, yes. On one condition. Okay. You have to prove to me that you're doing this for more than just him. I'm doing it for everybody. You have to be doing it for yourself because yourself is the only thing that can pull you out. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm doing it for myself because I couldn't live with myself if I was doing nothing. Because my perception of myself is the person who, when bad shit is going down, tries to stop it. And if I let someone else step in and fix the problem, then I have failed being Sylvia Delaney. I also need to know that I can do this and that I can come back. When are you planning to do this? Tonight, because this happens before the sleep cycle. Yeah, I'm like, uh. And what time is it right now, then? This would have been a flashback to like right after Gabriel fell asleep, so like nine, right before, I mean. 9 p.m. the previous evening. What? She was doing the research that night while everyone slept except you two. Yeah. Uh, but you went out to shoot pumpkin. You went out to shoot pumpkins at eight. This would have happened at nine. Yeah. So, um, before dawn. Yeah. Oh, then Roxy would just say no. <laughs> Those are not good enough reasons. All right. Uh, I'll do it myself then. Okay. I'm uh, sure Rudy can figure out something for you. No, I don't think he can. But um, anyway. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I should probably go get started. Uh, so we will return to the lighthouse. Okay. And that is where we can pause until next week, because we are almost up on time. Up on the top of the hour. Okay. I don't think that's the right one. Hold on. <laughs> While Tyler is pulling up his outro, I do have a question out of character, right out of game. Since Sophie is trying to go into Shadow as quickly as possible, figure something out, and get back, I feel like Rudy should fashion some sort of spiritual bungee jumping system. I don't have Dots of Spirit. 
<laughs> I feel like we should... <laughs> We can I've find got... a workaround, damn it! What part of that no, was three. a question? The... No two. Rudy should build a spiritual bungee jumping system. Question mark. Spiritual <laughs> flubber. Oh so... no, we're talking my language. <laughs> so I don't remember how much extra spheres cost, but I have eleven XP. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where was I? As tonight's chapter comes to a close and we prepare to re we prepare to return to our sleepy mundane lives. We hope you will return next week to continue this tale with us. But until then, there are many other fine adventures the cast and crew of Orbital Tales can provide you with. On Mondays, experience Curse of Strahd revamped at 7 p.m. Eastern, followed by Solemn Vale Seasons of Strange at 11. On Tuesdays, beginning March 8th, experience Dark Sun with us using 5th edition D&D at 7 p.m. On Wednesdays, come see the final episode of Fallout 2D20 Season 2, Citrus Be Mine, this week at 8 p.m. On Thursdays, come experience a bloodbath with our Belial's Brood and Vampire the Requiem at 5 p.m. And then punch Scum and Villainy with the Defenders of Tomorrow playing Savage World Superheroes at 9 on Fridays at 7, experience the grand drama of Masks of Nyarla Thotep as our brave heroes venture through the London chapter of this epic tale, followed by our tale of darkness and madness in Cult Divinity Lost at 11. On Saturdays at 7, we play Reign of Winter in Pathfinder 2E as our heroes try to prevent the entire world from being plunged into a frozen eternity, followed by our grand aria, the Red Opera at 11. Finally, on Sundays, we return to this story. I myself can be found next running session zero, Curse of Strahd. Come see a new twist on a familiar tale of gothic horror. And now, dearest seekers, tell the audience who you are and where on all these awesome tales you can be found, as well as where you can be found outside of our show. Hey, everybody. I am uh, so excited to be back in Mage playing Gabriel Alvarado Hargrave. But now I must return to being Ambrose in real life. Definitely not a mage, though. God, that would be really fucking cool. You can find me all over the internet as I am Changeling, because it me I am Changeling. You can also find me on Etsy at Meet and Co. Designs, and you can find me playing again Monday at 11 p.m. No, wait. Yes. We'll be in Strahd. Yes. However, yes. I will not be till like the second half. Why not? Yeah. Group of therapy. Okay. And then, uh, then, Solemn Vale, the finale of the rake. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Tonight, I played Drake Jones. And you can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Um, and. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, and the next time you will find me will be in a shocking kind of recent turn of events next Sunday for Mage White <laughs> Um. So yeah, tune in and uh, see Drake Jones punch stuff. And I am Savannah. You can find me on the interwebs at Miss Miss Emo Fox. You can find me Monday to play Curse of Strahd revamped as well as Solemn Vale. Um, not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, you can find me for Dark Sun, th Wednesday, Thursday, I have a break. Uh, Fridays, you can find me <laughs> on the second round of the show for Cult Divinity Lost. On Saturdays, you can find me uh, for Rain or Winter and Red Opera. And then of course, Sundays, you can find me here playing White Walls. You can also find me in some of the upcoming Patreon games, like Doctor Who, The Chameleon Arc, and Mage, Mage Ascension. Which one are we playing? Awakening. Awakening. Mage Awakening, The Secret World. It's Mage something. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Rachel. I am Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere. Uh, that, that was... Those were some scenes. I think I got some bleed. Um. Anyway, oh, thank you. I know. Oh, I'm gonna have to have a 
a long hot shower. <laughs> yeah, uh, so you can find me in Stolen Fires on Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. You will find me here tomorrow evening for Seasons of Strange, Solemn Veil. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, and then Tuesdays, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, we're going to be starting some Dark Sun. Uh, this has been a game setting that I've always really wanted to try. I am excited to experience it. Uh, Wednesday, I'm going to be over on Plastic Age Place uh, doing some D&D. And then back here on Thursday for uh, Vampire the Requiem, Belial's Brood. And then after that, Big Dad Industries, an all set out game, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Um, we got to figure that out with the yeah, stuff that's going on. Yeah, plot hits a little too close to recent events but um anyway uh you know maybe the peace talks will work let's all light a candle that they do um but then i will also be back here on friday uh for masks of narlathotep and uh soon in about a month or so i'm going to be starting up horror on the orient express which if you subscribe to our patreon at the 20 dollar level you will get access to uh, so, yeah, come check me out, Stolen Fires. Hello, I am Rosie, regular size mom. You can find me on Twitter as at mom underscore sized or on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram as odd duck dice because I make dice for fun. I think everyone except my husband on the stream rolls them now because he refuses. Um, wow. <laughs> she he's knows a, why. He's a, he's a one set of dice type of person. So whereas I have like a bag full of I don't even know how many. He's like, I will use this one set forever. Um, I mean, I even went and searched for a set they no longer make because uh, they matched my regular set of dice and bought a D10 set of them. Yep. But regardless, they're really pretty and you should check them out because they're pretty. Uh, and you can find me on Bulk Tales uh, Thursdays and Sundays. And Thursdays, I am uh, Gamred Fingervine, a superhero that shoots lasers out of her fingers, uh, generally creating very large holes in villains. Uh, but because of the tone of the game, they still don't die somehow, which I think is worse. So you um, finger bang them to death? Yes, quite literally. It's like Cyclops in the animated series where he would laser people and they just don't die. Which I think is fairly horrific. Um, but, so yes, I, I literally finger bang them to death with lasers. Um, but not literally. <laughs> and then I... Um, God damn it, Wolf. What? I'll tell you later. All right. Um, and then I'm here playing mage. Uh, you can also, on March 3rd, over on Gehenna Gaming, find the first of four episodes of uh, my take on Bluebeard's Bride, uh, Heritage Horror. I love running Bluebeard, and I wanted to see what would happen if I made people do it for more than one session. Uh, so tune in to watch me say awful things uh, to Savannah and a few other fantastic people that were like, yeah. You can totally torment me for four weeks. That's fine. Um, so, you know, Gehenna Gaming, March 3rd. Uh, check it out. Hello, I'm Ben, Big Dad, uh, Chief Human of Big Dad Industries. Uh, check us out on Twitter at Big Dad Ind, because it wouldn't fit. Um, I played Rudy, our devout follower of the Kitab Al Alasir. Uh, Society of Ether member. Um, so yeah, don't know if we're playing on Thursday, just because, as Rachel said, ooh, we don't support imperialism anyway. Um, and our game's kind of about taking over a country, so we're gonna cool that for maybe a little bit. We'll see. Um, I, I'll probably try to find something to fill the slot if we are. Um, but also, if you go to my Twitter, uh, I have a poll up because uh, I will be running a one shot this Friday for Roll for Ukraine, a charity cause that a number of channels are picking up 
to raise money for Ukrainian relief uh, funds. Uh, you can anyway. The, the poll is to pick what kind of game I'm running because I don't even know what I'm doing. So check that out, and you can find me in the Fallout finale as Rocky, the super mutant, who has just been reunited with his long lost friend that no one, including me, thought was real. Uh, Aldrin Parsec is alive and well. We're gonna go to Infinity and Beyond together. Check it out. And when is that? That's Wednesday. Oh, I love it. Okay. Excellent. And now, as is normal for my games, in your normal talking order, please describe your favorite group scene of the moment, of the moment, of the evening. Oh shit, that me. Okay. Uh all of it. But uh I really like so it wasn't a unified group moment, but I liked when like half went to go like help Gabriel decompress from thousand years of torment. And then the other half is like, okay, he's alright. He's in good hands. Let's fuck Lacey up and i just i loved that it was really cool the uh yeah i i really liked um the 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 meeting between drake iris and sophie um going over like what we're gonna do and working through what our actual kind of like next step goal and what our goal is and, and our steps was really awesome but I, I really liked that other group going over there and getting to flesh out their characters roxy getting to shift and um be a little bit more herself um away from my <laughs> um, so yeah um good stuff i think i think yeah like that that moment where the two groups kind of got to do their thing. And that leaves me next. Um, maybe just because it totally just like kapoofed anything that I was doing, but the fact that Lacey just swooshed my fire away and then turned it into a little fireball and then set Iris on fire from the inside. Um, you know, things that happen. <laughs> Jesus. Then I'm like, oh, this woman's going to annihilate me. <laughs> Thoughts you should have when you fight in the bandy, but. Uh, I cannot pick a single scene. I loved all of them. Uh, I love like the conversation I had with Drake. I, love, I really love the conversation I had with Gabriel. Um, even the, the scene with Roxy was really, really cool. Um, like, so I've, I've sort of established um, that I've got an alternative. So now I'm really curious, like what answer was Roxy looking for? That's the same thing I asked in the side, cause me too. Tyler already asked me. <laughs> And I'm just like, my brain is a potato. It just knows it didn't hear what it, like Roxy just knows she didn't hear what she wanted. Mostly because, what, what did I say? Roxy is he, freaked out after seeing what Lacey could do and doesn't want everyone to die horribly. No. <laughs> but uh, most of Sophie's answer to could still be linked back to her just wanting to prove herself to other people. Okay. And that... That is that is Sophie. <laughs> which is fair. But when you are telling an, you know, a werecat who is very spiritual and very, you know, linked with the intricacies of, like, 
the mm-hmm. soul and stuff that you are willingly putting yourself into the shadow with no real way out except i believe and she's like no i, I mean, am not pers- participating in your doom sorry technically what may just do i'm gonna do the thing and it's gonna work because i believe it is so like and that that's is fine sophie that is also one of the major the- ways that you do contention between shifters and mages is because of that right there <laughs> and i mean it's also like, no sophie didn't want to say that they've she didn't want to explain that like yeah they've been tempting me and i want to know that i can resist yeah, yeah. that would have been an even worse answer i know <laughs> i know that's why she kept that with herself <laughs> she's like oh no but uh, apparently i've got a cool alternative racked up so <sighs> the shifter you sent me won't do what i want anyway <laughs> No, she's not going to complain about that. No. Like, you don't want to help. You don't have to. Uh, she's going to call Leo for help. going to spark a whole new subplot I've been hiding. It'll be fine. Okay. I'm done. Um, I liked the pumpkin chucker stuff. Um, that, that was just fun. Uh, I really enjoyed... Um, all the little moments where Gabriel was like trying to find things to relax into um, that little bit because it's a long process but uh, yeah start somewhere and sleeping on top of a giant warm friendly cat isn't a bad thing pretty reasonable place to start uh, yeah pretty, pretty much Iris's contribution to that would be to give you like I don't know uh, a, a, buy a spa for you for a week or something. <laughs> rent or buy? I guess rent because it's only for a week. I mean, there's no reason to you, own one. You could I buy mean, it and then sell it. <laughs> if if that's entirely likely for Iris. If it's rented, that means everybody gets a spa day. No, she's going a, to. She's going to buy it. For, She's, well, maybe that's what she'll do to keep everyone away from Sophie while this is happening. <laughs> they'll buy a spa, tell everyone to go away for a week. And then gonna break she'll... into that spa sometime. <laughs> and then sell it after, do, I don't know, maybe she'll, I don't know, I'll figure it out. Something with progenitors. Uh, but yeah. Schemes. Yeah, so I also really like uh, Lacey no selling the fire. Uh, I like the thing, a negotiation that happened off screen that I can't talk about yet. Uh, but I really, my favorite thing was Steve's commitment to still being trapped in the illusion and basically making a fool of himself hardcore dancing. I loved it. I love, I love that dedication. Also, I need to recon something. I pushed that conversation with Gabriel and Roxy to the night before because I forgot that you were spending that night researching the ritual. I thought you were doing the ritual, but you had to spend the first night figuring out what the ritual was. So that did happen in the morning. I wouldn't have changed anybody's answers, but it adds more context to the scene. Okay. Excellent. Being excellent to each other. And as usual with my games, uh, I don't think I added them for Mage yet. I have to do that next week. Everybody gets from the audience gets special ways you can send, spend bits and channel points to vote because oh, we I don't the first do votes anymore. What? That was, we were the first one you did. Well, yeah, that's right. Was, Somebody bought one tonight. Mess. Yes, Betty bought one tonight. Yeah. Right. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. It was a super mess. And it took yes. 15 XP. <laughs> yes, it did. You need to uncurse that as another subplot. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. No votes, but excellent being excellent to each other. And we will see you all again in the next show. Good night.